Now, with a two channel filter bank, free of aliasing, right, we can write x hat of z to be some t of z times x of z where t of z is this transfer function given by one half h naught of z f naught of z plus h 1 of z f 1 of z. And this is called the distortion transfer function. Why? Obviously, as the name suggests, the signal x of z is distorted by this transfer function t of z. Now, we apply the conditions for f naught and f 1 through the alias cancellation uh, equations and we simplify this as t of z is 1 half h naught of z h 1 of minus z minus h 1 of z h naught of minus z. Okay. Now, when I evaluate t of z at z equals e j omega, I get some magnitude of this transfer function and then I have some phase phi of omega x of e j omega. Right. So, I just rewrote this transfer function as having some magnitude response having some phase, uh, phase um, response. Now, unless modulus of t of e j omega is a constant some d which is not equal to 0 for all omega we have magnitude distortion right unless this is some constant if I know it is a constant gain then I can just attenuate that gain I can just use some amplifier to just you know either adjust my gain accordingly if it is a constant gain. If not if the gain varies across frequencies then I have amplitude distortion. Now unless phi of omega equals a plus b omega I mean is, is of the form unless phi of omega is of the form a plus b omega x hat of e j omega suffers from phase distortion. This is very very important this phase distortion because the signal can have different phases for different frequencies and you have to really compensate them very carefully. That means, if you have a signal this will have different frequency components and imagining imagine that you are sending the signal through a bank of filters and each filter or you know each frequency is suffering some distortion in its amplitude and, and in its phase right. If the, that means, the delay at the output when you would get the signals would be different for different frequencies that is the physical meaning of phase distortion right. So, different frequency components will arrive at different times at your output if you have a phase distortion and it is important.
to eliminate this. So, these are two major points. Okay. Now, we will go one step further. Let V of z is be equal to h naught of z times h 1 of minus z and V of minus z is basically h naught of z h naught of minus z put a minus here h naught of minus z times h 1 of z right this is just minus z here. Okay. So, now t of z is one half of v of z minus v of minus z. So, this is what we have. Now, with this we can we can see that if you have a z and a minus z of z square and a minus z square is the same z power 4 and minus z power 4 is the same. So, therefore, you can think that all the even powers get cancelled here and you will be left with odd powers right. So, t of z has only odd powers of z therefore, t of z can take this form z power minus 1 that is you factor out a unit delay times some polynomial in z square right because you will have a z cube z power minus 3 all the odd components you will have. So, just factor the delay out the rest of it would be even right. So, there will be some polynomial in z square and I think uh, an inspection would tell you that modulus of t of z has a period of pi instead of 2 pi. Just observe this power here. If it has to be periodic z e power 2 j omega right j 2 omega plus so, what would you do if you were to translate this by a period t and that has to be basically pi right, and just because of the power 2 here. So, we have a notion for perfect reconstruction. So, for the perfect reconstruction property t of z has to be of the form c z power minus a naught that is it just suffers from some gain c and some delay perfect and the ideal case is when n naught equals 0 and c equals 1 that is an ideal situation right. A less ideal situation would be to have some gain and some delay because you can compensate. So, this implies that x hat of n is basically some delayed version of the input. Now, let us consider the quadrature mirror filter bank system suppose h 1 
of z that is if it satisfies the quadrature mirror filter property then h1 of z is h0 of minus z which implies h1 of z is a good high pass filter if h0 of z is a good low pass filter. If h0 of z your base filter is a very good low pass filter with good properties then h1 of z is a very good high pass filter and it is obvious to see that the magnitude of h1 of e j omega is basically magnitude of h0 of e j pi minus omega right and that minus 1 accounts for this factor. Now, all the filters are completely specified as we discussed earlier that if you have a filter h0 then you get h1 f0 and f1. Now, the distortion function in this case is easy t of z is basically one half of h0 square z minus h1 square z. And then if we can simplify this as one half of h0 square z minus h0 square of minus z. So, in terms of one base filter h0 of z we can get the distortion function for a quadrature mirror filter bank. So, I think the sequence of steps were as follows we get the distortion function after we force the alias cancellation conditions right. Once we force uh, alias cancellation we will have an equation in terms of h0 and h1 in our distortion function and then we invoke the QMF property and then we can eliminate h1 as well and we get in terms of purely h0. So, I think this gives us an idea that we can start with this distortion function and we can basically figure out how uh, we have to design these filters h0 uh, we have to design this filter h0 of z that can eliminate amplitude distortion ok. Now, the phase is a little more um, interesting. So, let us just get towards the phase uh, distortion for phase distortion. So, let us consider the filter h0 of z to be of this general form h0 of n z power minus n n equals 0 to n. Let us assume that h0 of n is real. So, we also let h0 of n equals plus minus n minus n. So, this will ensure it is linear phase, but for low pass property you have to remove the negative because if you have a negative sign it is implic it is implying it could be um, a band pass or a high pass right. So, all the coefficients should have the same sign is one of the conditions. So, h naught of n is basically h naught of capital N minus small n ok. So, with this we can simplify things a little further. So, we can say h naught of e j omega is of this form e power minus j omega times some linear function of omega it could just be a constant 
times r omega and you can simplify this to this form T of e j omega is e power minus j omega n one half of that times mod h naught of e j omega square minus minus one power n magnitude of h naught e j phi minus omega square this is your distortion function. Now, if n is even this becomes 1. So, this would just vanish T of e j omega reduces to 0 at the frequency omega equals pi by 2 leading to severe attenuation. So, I will leave the simplification as a homework exercise I mean this simplification of how you have to arrive how you would get this T of e j omega in this form I will leave this as a homework exercise. Okay. So, with this there are um, some other details that we have to understand regarding minimizing the residual amplitude distortion right we eliminated the aliasing error then we looked at the phase distortion right we said we want to have linear phase we started with an fir filter we ensured that it is the uh, symmetric it is mirror symmetric right so now with the mirror symmetric property in mind then we we want to simply we simplified it further to get the overall distortion function and that distortion function could have possibly an amplitude distortion because it is it is distorted across frequencies the amplitude is distorted across various frequencies right so let us see in a little bit of careful detail what this is about so if you think about how this h naught of e j omega square magnitude plus h1 of e j omega square how this looks ideally you might want it to be at 1 but at the quadrature frequency which is at pi by 2 you can have a blip up or you can have a blip down. And our goal would be to have the magnitude of h naught of e j omega square plus magnitude of h 1 of e j omega square to be 1 approximately is equal to 1 is ideal close to 1 is approximate. And what do we need to do if this is our constraint we have to choose the coefficients of our filter h naught of z such that this relationship holds right. So, h of course, if you use q m f property h 1 can be expressed in terms of h naught we know that. So, everything can be recast in h naught itself and then if we recast it in that framework 
then we have to design the filter that is we have to choose the coefficients of this filter h0 of z such that this is equal to 1 approximately, but that is hard to get already we uh, invoked some symmetric property for the filter we ensured it is linear phase right we, we took care of all these other constraints now to eliminate this distortion completely would be very hard. So, let us formulate an objective function that possibly helps us to drive choosing our filter coefficients appropriately. Okay, let us assume phi is of the form alpha phi 1 plus 1 minus alpha times phi 2 with 0 less than alpha less than 1 and let us define the functions phi 1 and phi 2 as follows. phi 1 basically goes from your stop band to your Nyquist integrating this function that is this is the magnitude square distortion and you are integrating it across all the frequencies. So, you are basically getting the energy right you are getting the energy in the tail from the stop band to pi and then suppose if you want if you choose phi 2 as summing up the energy over the residual that is 1 minus magnitude of h naught of e j omega square minus. So, I will now invoke the q m f property h naught of e j pi minus omega square and this if I were to integrate across all frequencies then I would want to choose h naught of n is minimum over all phi minimum or over all h naught of n minimum over all h naught of n this objective function phi. That means, if I choose alpha to be 1 I only minimize the tail energy right. If I choose alpha to be 0 I look at just this distortion that is it the h naught and h 1 magnitude square should deviate from 1 that residual the square energy I want to minimize over all frequencies. So, this is like your error that you have error square is what you set up here and I want to minimize this error square. Okay. So, these are some objective functions and I mean one such function is this. So, this gives you a gamut of choosing your alpha just from the tail um, that is from the stop band to pi versus looking at the entire band from 0 to pi and choosing this sort of objective functions um, leads us to an optimization procedure and this procedure was done by Johnston in the 1980, in the 1980 and these are called Johnston filters. So, if you designed your base filter with this objective function in mind then it gives rise to an optimal low pass filter under this constraint for this objective function and they are called Johnston filters. Okay. So, this completes our um, work on um, analysis of the two channel filter bank for alias cancellation for phase for minimizing the phase distortion and then for minimizing the amplitude distortion. So, you have to keep in mind first you start with the alias distortion 
you figure out how your synthesis filters have to be chosen to eliminate aliasing distortion. Then to simplify your design, you assume quadrature mirror property so that given a base low pass filter, you can construct the high pass filter as well. Then you analyze the magnitude distortion function, you analyze the distortion transfer function and from that you simplify further to look into the phase distortion and amplitude distortion and then construct filters that can minimize these distortions. Okay. So, with this we are done with the analysis of a two channel filter bank and we will extend this further towards m channel filter banks and then we will study the properties of those filter banks. We will stop here.